uh, now uh, if uh, Professor Silverio Niroca is uh, available, I will uh, take the time to uh, present a little bit. Uh, he uh, got his uh, higher degree and postgraduate degree in functional orthopedics in uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, and uh, also a PhD in uh, prosthetic dentistry at the uh, University of uh, Torino, uh, and also a post urology degree. He's professor and international director of uh, MPR International School, vice uh, president of uh, International Association of Post Urology Switzerland. Um, he uh, also uh, served uh, as uh, first lieutenant and director of the dental department of, of the Argentinian army and he received a postgraduate uh, degree in functional orthopedics in uh, 82. Um, uh, he's uh, consulting and uh, collaborating regularly in numerous clinics in Italy, United Kingdom, Switzerland and uh, Spain as well as pursuing his ongoing researching and teaching activities through the MPI uh, International School and uh, in collaboration with other institutions and universities such as University of Sevilla, Spain, Master in Orthodontics, the uh, My Moi, Monides University in Argentina, the London School of Osteopathy, the Denver College of Dentistry in Sicily, University of Siena, as well as multiple ongoing projects with Universita uh, Abierta Interamericana, uh, University of Havana, Cuba, and ICOM School of Osteopathy. So without further ado, I give you Professor Silverio Di Roca. Please, you have the floor. Okay, thank you so much. Can you can you listen to me? Can you hear me well? Yes? Yeah. Okay, okay. I have to say thank you to your father to invite me eh, because it's a pleasure to me to be here eh, and I also collaborate with the new book you're doing eh, in the, that is important book and I think it's very important to say that would be a very good, good book for dentistry. Uh, I will try to explain. Today is a very long topic, <laughs> but uh, a lot of related people who stay behind me made my job easy <laughs> because they took about uh, something eh, that uh, is uh, maybe interdisciplinary. Eh? And I will share the my screen. Eh? You will see if my screen is seen now. Yes, you can see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Okay, all right. Uh, I have uh, the next year, I have 72 years old, and I have uh, 48 years working in the fields of medical sciences, plus six years of university. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I had a lot of experience all around the world because I speak four languages. I speak Spain, I speak uh, Italian, English, uh, French a little bit because it's not my my most common language. The French. Um, Dr. Brico was one of the my older teachers many many years ago. Uh, I met him in, uh, and, and I said that I have to, I, I had a lot of teachers, or a lot of teachers all around the world, and I <clears throat> that's why I was growing slowly a lot. You know, uh, in 1987 I met. Uh, Dr. Bricot in Milan. I, I lived in Milan at that time. And then I went to Marsiglia to study posturology because I, I, I understood immediately that posturology is the way for interdisciplinary. Yeah, but uh, at that moment, I understood something also yeah, that uh, all medical science, uh, we do not have a common protocol. You know what I mean in common protocol? If we want to work in interdiscipline, and I believe the only way to work is interdiscipline, and the only way to work is to know the whole body, not just one part of the body, 
the only way is to have a common protocol, a, a common language. Yeah? And that's why many, many years ago, yeah, after I finished my formation in posturology, in 1995, I started to develop uh, this NPR protocol that is called myofunctional postural rehabilitation. I will try to explain first, uh, slowly, slowly, what is the protocol? Because if it's not, you do not, you do not understand the vertical dimension we are found in. Eh? Dentist, I, 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 I am two times dentist, <laughs> but dentists look only teeth all around the world. Sometimes in the history, dentistry go out the teeth, go to the TMJs and stop in the TMJs. And I understood in all these years that it's very difficult to work if uh, we do not understand the whole body, but not just the receptors of the body, the whole body. Uh, I will try to explain today the basic concept in, in NPR protocol, what is our concept of vertical dimension, neuromuscular vertical dimension, the importance of the balance, the dysfunctions, I will show you some case studies, and if you have any question, I will be here, no problem. But uh, many, many years ago, I understood that, that synthetically, the problems, the diseases are divided in two big groups. These functions are these morphisms. And if you understand that at the beginning, I think the way is very easy. This function is an alteration of the functionality. Very simple, the word is saying all. This, morphi this morphism is alteration of the structure. And I may sometimes say an, an sample. If we know that's very common sample, yeah? and I hope uh, he agree on it. Yeah? Quasimodos, yeah? Quasimodos. Uh, Quasimodo is normal or not? Is in good function or is it not a good function? And if I want to try to put him straight, like Adonis, maybe I will create a disease on him. That's why we said we have to understand if we, if our body is functioning well. We know very well that during the age, our body adapt because we we are our body is an anti seismic structure. Diseases, aggression, intoxication, etc., are pushing us every single day, and we adapt. After forty years old, adaptation is coming down. And in that way, we can compensate uh, or we can have a very big disease. That's why I said maybe Quasimodo was compensated and is healthy. And if I want to put him straight, I will create a problem. I love osteopathy because osteopathy have a very high study, perhaps, I had to study all in my life. I was listening to you for implantology. I studied implantology many, many years ago, it's in 1990, in Sweden. <laughs> I did all in dentistry. But I also try to study what is physiotherapy, what is osteopathy, what is pedestrian, what is psychologist. And that's why I create a protocol for the whole medical sciences. And I believe very strong that we cannot work alone. But also, we cannot work together if we don't speak the same language. And that's why I try to create a protocol with the same language in diagnosis and in treatment. And the things I understood was the first three questions any medical science have to ask themselves is first, why? 
something happened. This is diagnosis. Second is when I have to act. This is the priority. And last, how? This is tools. Different tools. Different tools. No, no, not only one. But the third question is why it happened. Is diagnosis. And all around the world, we lose the diagnosis. I, I am crying to say that, but I work in all around the world. I have contacts in all around the world, and diagnosis is the last. <laughs> we go to act, eh? we go to put the tools. Eh? I, 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 I was listening to you, instrument. Instrument is very good. But the other thing is if you don't know what are following, you don't understand what you find. <laughs> eh? And you have to, I think, in the whole university, this is the thing I'm trying to do in my school, to teach common diagnosis. And uh, if we, my function of postural rehabilitation is this, yeah? and it's a method, no, it's a method for all medical sciences, not for dentists. You know why? Because yeah? I was in a, in a congress like this many years ago, yeah? and I said, uh, I know, a lot of doctors, a lot of physiotherapists, a lot of osteopaths that they don't know the craniofacial system. No? And all my colleagues eh, make applause to me. You know, say, oh, Silberio is a dentist, all right, he's defending us. Eh? And I say, but I, I know a lot of dentists <coughs> that they only know smile <laughs> and they don't know the rest of the body. That is the that is the goal. And that's why I structured a protocol to work together for all in 300 degrees. And the protocol is very easy. It's diagnosis and therapeutic methods who use tools for all medical sciences, all disciplines. But the aim is to put in harmony, not the TMJs, and I will explain later, the craniofacial system with the, the tonic postural system. I was listening to my teacher, Bricot, he said uh, the, 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 the craniofacial system is not a receptor. I agree totally, but I understood that this is a big disturber, the only big disturber of the tonic postural system. <coughs> and if dentistry do not understand that, we never will have good physical rehabilitation. The craniofacial system is the big disturber. And that's why Dr. Bigot don't know that. And when I finished her lectures, I said, wow, I understood that moment, I believe for, I believe, I say that is true. But if I cannot do the rehabilitation of my craniofacial system, because the posture is disturbing me, I have to stop the work because I cannot do the rehabilitation in one day. And in that moment, was a shock in my mind. I said, I have to discover something to annulate, not to treat, to annulate temporarily this big disturber to allow a good rehabilitation. And then when all is okay, I, as a dentist, will do a very good rehabilitation and I will explain what how concept we have in rehabilitation. In rehabilitation, I today I will talking about this and I kind of fashion system. I am not talking about biochemistry, about foods, about no, I'm talking how. When I finish the body rehabilitation, I have to find the job position and the vertical dimension. And in that position I have to study with the teeth what I have to do. That is the moment to study the teeth, not first. We always study first the teeth. If you annulate the system, the biochemistry, if you annulate the foot, if you annulate the eyes, the things that I are disturbing, mainly the mouth, if you annulate the mouth, the other medical science can do a very good physical rehabilitation. And then when they finish, 
our job will be to find the job position, the vertical dimension, and then build the occlusion. And in that way, we will not have any relapses. And it's not the technique, because rehabilitation means maybe orthodontics, maybe orthopedics, maybe orthodontics and prosthetic, maybe only prosthetic, all the tools we know. In that moment, we have to plan in which tool in dentistry we have to use. And that is I to try to explain today the concept of vertical dimension. And that is another problem also. It's another problem. This is triangle of the life. The balance is mind, structure, and biochemistry. We live in a world of intoxication. How we can do a treatment in the mass change if we have intoxication? We cannot. <laughs> and structure is the last, not the first. If we annulate all the things before, yeah, you know, I say to my students that the brain, yeah, yeah, just simplificating, the brain is as a PC. Yeah? to receive information, esteroception, proprioception, even if receptors are working bad. But the only problem is our PC here has not antivirus. He received information bad and do the answer bad. That's why I was thinking many, many years ago to put an antivirus who I call that deprogrammation. Annulating temporarily this bad, wrong information to allow us to do a good physical rehabilitation and then to treat the reprogramming. Reprogramming of all the things we need. Eh? Because maybe if we annulate the aggression, eh? the receptors eh? reprogram themselves, maybe. But if it's not, in that moment, we have to reprogram the things. And then, in our field, job position, vertical dimension, teeth. We do the reverse in dentistry. We look only teeth. Uh, I don't believe in first class, second class, and third class, but it's a polemic now, eh? because I don't believe in malocclusion. I believe in uh, disharmony. Eh? We don't call that uh, in our school. We don't say malocclusion of first, second class. We say anteposition, retroposition. We say discrepancies, vertical discrepancies, sagittal discrepancies, transversal discrepancies, all, all related to dysfunction of the muscles. Dysfunction of the muscles. Eh? And we do clinical diagnosis, instrumental diagnosis, and complementary analysis. All medical protocols do that. All medical protocols do that. Any medical services. Talking about craniofacial system, and that is our that is our topic today. No. Our goal is to put in balance craniofacial system, not TMJs, not the jaw. Craniofacial system in balance with tonic postural system. That means with the rest of the world. We have all connected. We are not disconnected. All connected. Vertical dimension, we believe we have two vertical dimensions. Anatomical vertical dimension is easy. It's a structural vertical dimension. But the most important is the neuromuscular vertical dimension and if we understand that that neuromuscular vertical dimension we call normally free space or relax of muscles to obtain that we have to have good postural balance to have a local relaxed muscle and in that moment sometimes eh, we are surprises because from that situation of free space in balance with the body, we know two millimeter or less have to be the vertical dimension, anatomical. But sometimes it's not relation because it's abrasion, body, it was, was loose. A lot of things happen. Yeah? And if we understand that, if we can put 
the vertical neuromuscular and postular dimension connected with the anatomical all is protected but if it's not if we cannot because we can we always eh, cannot do everything but if we understand before we can protect our system we can protect the craniofacial system and the rest of the body this is the thing i am preparing for your father in the cap in the chapter of the of, of the book and um, now i'm doing a, a little resume of that. this is anatomical eh? this is an, this is easy it's answered mathematically <laughs> but eh, sometimes that there is not coincidences with the neuromuscular and functional and postural dimension. It's a functional vertical dimension. Anatomical, from the relax of the muscles, eh, it's two millimeters. You take two millimeters, this is the anatomical vertical dimension. This is the occlusion. You have to create the occlusion there. But sometimes we cannot. More chronically, is the problem less we can do that that's why we always said to everybody prevention in child craniofacial and myofunctional and postural orthopedics not orthopedics not functional orthopedics craniofacial myofunctional and postural orthopedics if we do that and i will show you cases later the adults will be healthy. And to obtain that, we need absolutely interdiscipline. We need the osteopath, we need the doctor, we need the physiotherapist, we need the dentist, everybody who speak the same language and we work together. This is our protocol. It's very important. This is an, it's a very simple instrument to reprogram. This is very easy to reprogram the, to reprogram the, 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 the jaw position. That's not. But the neuromuscular vertical dimension is something related with function, muscular functions, and posture. We cannot do that only treating, just local. Okay? That's very important. It's a physiological vertical dimension. Nothing to do. And we have to have the receptor imbalance. And if we don't have the receptor imbalance, we never can do a good function of the craniofacial system. That's why I invent this protocol to work together, to work every every medical science in science together, speaking the same language, but mainly, mainly, mainly in growth. I am fanatic <laughs> to prevent in growth because I know there we help the adult in the future. Eh? We're talking about TMJs. Eh? Listen, you are happy eh, if I tell you I am a specialist in this finger only? No. <laughs> Better if I am a specialist in the hand, no. Better if I am a specialist in the whole body. And we say I am a specialist in TNJs. No. <laughs> TNJs is part of the craniofacial system. It's not TNJs. It's a joint, a special joint, but it's part of the craniofacial system. That's why we say craniofacial system balance, not TMJs. And we know very well TMJs under depression, start the disease. Make resist traction, little traction, not pressure. But uh, we have to find the craniofacial system balance and the body balance. And this is our goal. No? The, the craniofacial system is brain, stomatognatic system, teeth. Eh? Harmony, we found harmony. <clears throat> harmony in the whole body, not just in one part. Eh? During the growth, eh, we know how the system grows. Here we have to talk about epigenetic, we have to talk about growth, or a lot of things. We don't have time to talk about that. But the main thing is muscle change of the body are disturbing when the jaw is not centrated. And some body, somebody say, why? Eh? You know why? Because when the jaw is not centrated, it starts increasing the pressure inside the joint. And if increasing the pressure inside the joint, we have a special proprioception there. Because they know, increasing the pressure, there is a disease in the TMJs. 
alert to the brain. Brain is very automatic reaction. Yeah? Starting the bruxisms, he said, something are, is blocking the job position, the teeth, we have to go to destroy the teeth. Very bad reaction because it's a starting blocking of the cranial sutures, blocking of the craniosacral breathing, hyperactivity of the muscle, blocking the neck, and slowly, slowly creating to the teeth a problem. Yeah? That's why we have to understand yeah? the craniofacial system, not the TMJs, not only that. Yeah? And then when we have all the things, we have to create an optimal, optimal occlusion, and I don't have time to talk about what I mean about functional occlusion, no, because it's not a static. Everybody told that, not a static. But in two millimeters, two millimeters of the occlusion, we are fighting for the health of the body. It's overjet and overwrite. If we have interferences there, bruxisms start because body gives freedom of movement. It's not static. This little space, eh, the brain said, have to be free, have to test it free. Swallowing, we test during the night. Eh? We said, destroy it. <laughs> Bruxisms. And start the big problem for the whole body. And imagine Bruxisms in the child is physiological. Look at the nature, eh? yeah, and the child has to brush to stimulate the growth. In an adult, no. <laughs> Does I have a very nice video about about bruxism? No, but this is the age. This is the age where we can prevent yeah? the oral corridor that is oxygenators, uh, lips, mentor, tongue, breathing habits. If those are in balance, growth is in balance, is balanced, <clears throat> and teeth goes along to the exact position with an orthodontic. Yeah. Malposition, not malocclusion, malposition or bad position of the teeth is a symptom of an imbalance of the oral corridor and the craniofacial system. It's a symptom, it's not a disease. And we are treating the symptom, moving the teeth. We are doing aspirin for an infection. That's terrible in dentistry. Eh? We, believe, we believe that eh, malposition, everybody call malocclusion. Bad position of the teeth is a disease. No, it's a symptom of something who here are not working well and who in posture is not working well is reflecting in the structure. Yeah. All this hypertonic dysfunction, etc., are created. The problem in the structure, breathing, yeah. swallowing, yeah. habits, yeah. all these things are creating problem in the teeth. And uh, dysfunction, dysfunction of the muscle change muscle chain reaction from the top to the bottom to the bottom to the top yeah. have it in a war this changes if you understood affect directly the structure and who lose the structure <laughs> ever lose the structure <laughs> The muscle win. The muscle deform the structure. <laughs> structure is a static. And imagine if we add the mind, the biochemistry, all these things. We cannot have a good rehabilitation doing only this. We are doing restoration. The restoration is good. I understood. That. Restoration, not rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is to make the things working like before. If we don't do all the balance, we never will do that. Eh? Particularly in growing, particularly there, particularly there, we have to study the lip dysfunction, the chin dysfunction, the respiratory dysfunction, the swallowing, the postural dysfunction, the negative habits in the child we have to prevent for the future. Eh? We 
This, all this function are creating alteration of the growth, disruption to the growth, compression of the jaw, alteration of the premaxilla, dental viral alteration, mandibular position changes, postural changes, and TMJ disorder in the future. That age, if we treat, I see all my colleagues when they say a child say, wait, when they change the teeth and we will put braces and it's finished. No, <laughs> I can put braces every time in my life. It's not the limit. Growth is finished. And if we don't act during the growth, we condemnate a human being to a disease. <laughs> But study craniofacial orthopedics is very difficult. You have to understand habits, growth, dysfunction, posture, etc., etc., etc. It's more easy to learn biomechanics. You know, I put some braces, some expansion. It's very easy. That I teach my students two days to do that. But they live three years with me learning craniofacial orthopedics. <laughs> you know why? Because in dentistry, all can be relieved. Growth, if we make a mistake, it is not relieved. <laughs> if we make a mistake there during the growth, we condemn the human being for the whole life. If it relieves in an orthodontic treatment, I can do again the orthodontic treatment. If some prosthetic broken, I can do against the prosthetic again. If I make a mistake during the growth, it's not recidiva. <laughs> That's why it's very difficult to understand craniofacial orthopedics. This situation, if we don't treat it, will arrive like an adult like this. And here I can do nothing. But in that age, you saw with craniofacial orthopedics, with this device only by nighttime use it, we can do this, that is magic. <laughs> Making the function slowly, slowly. And if I have to do an orthodontic treatment now, it's very easy, very simple and non-traumatic. And sometimes I don't need orthodontic if I work in prevention. Deprogramming, balance and reprogramming. This is our protocol. Always. Eh? The bed device is a device that I invented many, many years ago to deprogram. And I don't call bite because everybody says it's a bite. No, it's bed. Body equilibrium device is a device with a special concept with a thermoplastic material who adapt with the temperature of the body and maintain the system annulated. And that allows the whole physical rehabilitation to go good. And then after that, we do our job. Bed is a, bed is a deprogramming device. It's a only one size, thermoplastic. You can adapt to everybody. We use in orthopedic also, the same device. In child, we can modify anytime you like. This device is creating a good deprogramming. And then study the posturology and the posturometry. With the posturometer, we can measure if we treat our treatment is disturbing the body posture. And we can do diagnosis, we can follow the treatment, and we can see if we are going well or bad. Instrumental diagnosis, yeah? very simple diagnosis. Simple, have to study how to do the diagnosis. Not a very simple instrument. And the, the reprogramming, eh? the reprogrammer, or we can use uh, we can use also microplanes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We call that progressive, and progressive. We are habituated to do all quick. We do not respect anymore biological times. Never is quick. We have to do it slowly, slowly, founding the job position. Eh? Reprogram slowly, progressive, not in one day, 20 hours, two months, three months, the time you need. And then after that, okay? this is the tools we use normally. Yeah? 
this function deprogramming when we deprogramming we annihilate the muscle stress the jaw is going automatically to the relationship the central relationship it's easy <laughs> to obtain that we have to relax the whole muscle body and the jaw is going automatically centrated we have to find the vertical dimension in that moment reprogramming to find the vertical dimension where we will build the occlusion this is our protocol in simple words no studies this guy this is prosthetic just prosthetic <laughs> one case of prosthetic the vertical dimension no but look at the posture 14 kilos of overload before and he finished with five kilos an adult <laughs> all body balancing equilibrium with the craniofacial system this is the goal if he, and if i know how to be the function built a functional occlusion that is permanent for whole life <laughs> other patient complicated patient yeah? with the loosening of the vertical dimension chronic patient if we do another way yeah? another way yeah? this was the beginning we do something like this <laughs> to create the vertical dimension with the rest of the body in balance it's just a simple job a simple simple job but that patient is healthy you don't need a lot of money you have to think you have to discover what is the problem when the simple things you can do everything pet therapy i told you look at the deprogramming patient with posture after the programming seven kilos zero after the programming just the programming, but I am not saying it's cure. I am relating the, the system. Now they have to work. Look at eh? four kilos zero. Eh? The whole system five to zero. Eh? A lot of cases I can show you four to zero one. Convergences. We, took, we see all. We see the diagnosis. I don't talking about diagnosis, no. But we see a lot of diagnosis: clinical diagnosis, stomatognathic diagnosis, biochemistry diagnosis, food support. All, all. We, we, we study diet. We study intoxication. We study how to clean the body, not just to put the teeth or to put some uh, physical therapy. Yeah? Look at that. Eh? Zero. Five to zero. Eh? All is the same. Eh? The one to zero. Four to zero. We measure if our system is making interferences with the rest of the body. If it's not, rehabilitation will be good. And this is the goal. Orthopedic. These devices are invented devices, is a myofunctional and postural regulator that the child uses during the night time. That is a special concept. Eh? I, I cannot explain that today, no, but special concept. Annulating the dysfunction is this device is deprogramming and reprogramming automatically because in a child I have to use the growth. I cannot wait the deprogrammation and then the reprogrammation. This device, the programming and reprogramming, and especially sociopathic, the, all, all, all other specialists help us. For the post yeah, look at that this is slowly slowly is changing a very simple device night device yeah. and then if we need orthodontic it's very simple orthodontic look at that that device how is changing the scoliosis <laughs> i took that picture because i'm not saying it's curing the scoliosis but look at how it's better <laughs> annulating the mouth mouth craniofacial system is a big disturber of the tonic postural system. That is the thing I want to introduce to the dentist. We have in our hands the future of, a, of the patient if we follow a good protocol. Look at it. This is orthopedics, craniofacial orthopedics. If we need orthodontics, it's very simple, very easy, you know, because we annulate the cause, what is the dysfunction? No? Look at it. Close the open bite. An appliance, 
using during the night time only. Exercises, osteopathy treatment, look at how they change. How this is this cross bite is related with this device. No braces. <laughs> and then we we see in the future what we have to do. Yeah? Look at how we changing the muscles, we changing the neuromuscular, <laughs> deprogramming, reprogramming, consolidation with your vision. This is our goal. This is my CV. You're talking about that, uh, yes. Uh, and if you have any question, this is my this is my web page and this is my email is among to come. Uh, I hope to, I was very clear in a short time to explain a very, very complex uh, treatment. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Diroka, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, it was uh, glad that uh, we are uh, closing to be on the same uh, page of course you have the vast experience but i uh, i feel sometimes when i see uh, patients especially kids uh, with dysfunctions that uh, something is missing and i uh, truly hope and uh, believe that uh, maybe your uh, system will uh, assist me to provide them a better uh, uh, treatment option rather to do some complicated uh, steps. Oh, uh, I hope we can I hope we can start some for some formation in your country and we're very glad to do that in your country. No yeah for sure for sure if we speak about uh, kids and uh, especially with kids with problem normally everybody's uh, running away from kids uh, with problems and uh, maybe running towards uh, uh, more uh, financial attractive uh, uh, solution but uh, for instance as I uh, said before uh, with the neuromuscular approach I have uh, applied uh, some techniques to kids and uh, the kids uh, start telling uh, uh, to their mom instantly, mom, I breathe, uh, I breathe better, mom, I have a different uh, position. Look at, look at me. And that's uh, only uh, by not touching the patient and just by uh, listening a little bit uh, the brain or uh, uh, or the muscles. So I uh, truly agree that there are a lot of uh, situations when bones are in a completely different length left to right but the muscles are still there i strongly believe that we should uh, listen and uh, also take uh, consideration to the, the neural system because the nerves will still be there the muscle will still be there the teeth or the, uh, the bone can uh, easily be gone but uh, we for sure will have the tongue left we will have the muscles uh, helping or impeding us uh, having a correct uh, position and uh, uh, I don't know whether uh, there are any other uh, other questions that uh, uh, arise from the people uh, connected anyway uh, they can arrive even later on the uh, YouTube platform uh, on the comments uh, area but uh, I take this opportunity to thank you for participating in our uh, in uh, innovative dentistry uh, uh, web conference uh, I thank also the other uh, participants uh, from yesterday, from uh, today, and uh, I thank uh, Professor Massimo, Professor Siciliano, and Professor Blasi, of course, Dr. Weber, Professor Schmaltz, Dr. Savastano, Diego Maggio, Bernard Rico, uh, and uh, Hope everybody will uh, continue to 
work uh, on uh, this path of innovating a little bit of dentistry and uh, having the eyes wide open to novelties. Um, you want to say something? I want to tell you something. I was I was very happy because you was talking with one of my teacher also. No, in nineteen in nineteen eighty eighty nine. I don't remember when I I was learning with Bernard Jenkins, no? and he's a very good professor. And, and uh, I was talking with him no many years ago. So he said, "Why you don't? You, because you are clever. No, you are never more. Why you don't uh, talk about posture?" Because I don't have the age, he said me. Both young have to do that, he said to me. <laughs> a very good teacher. I have a lot of teachers, very, very nice. I have to say thank you for all my teachers. Thank you, because they bring to me the whole formation in these 48 years uh, to create this, you know, because this is a creation for the knowledge I have for all of them. Yeah? I put uh, little pieces. Uh, uh, together, yes, and I create this protocol. But um, Jenkinson was a very, very nice professor. And I, I want to tell you after all the audience some, some words of Einstein. Einstein said the mind is like a parachute. If it's not open, eh, it doesn't work. Eh? And I tell to the medical science, we have to have the mind very open, very open to all the new things and don't lose the, the opportunity to learn. I still learning now. I teaching, I still learning because I have another philosophy who said in Argentina, Florentino Meguino, who said many, many years ago, say, I will change my mind any time that I discover new things. When my brain eh, was not ready to do that, I stopped to work, <laughs> he said. <laughs> and it's not age for that, eh? it's the brain who has to say, no changes, stop, no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy, you're very young, you're very young, you're, you're clever, you will be. You will have a very good future, very, very good. I listen to your presentation, and you have the mind open. So, thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, hopefully, I will remain with uh, my mind open and uh, that's it. Attention to details because all the details made the uh, uh, body as a whole. So, and I have to say are, to Marin, thank you so yeah. much for the invitation, Marin. Eh? Eh, we, but you know, we meet casually. Eh? You know, in the world, there is something happen. Eh? Something happen for something. You know, eh? Eh? Because, uh, we met eh? sometimes, and then. And then we are here to, to say something together. All right. And I hope uh, I hope we. I am very happy to be with your group. I am very very happy. Okay. Thank you, Monsieur Verio, for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you so much for you for your invitation. Thank you so much. Uh, Florine, say uh, some conclusion or. This conference. I have the voice. The voice is the voice is blocked. Blocked your voice. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, I have already thanked everybody contributing to our uh, online conference. Uh, uh, both. Uh, for both days yesterday and today uh, the main conclusion is to keep our minds uh, and eyes uh, open and always to learn new things and to watch the technical uh, innovations the novelties and anything that can uh, uh, allow us to provide to our patients a better service so, uh, even uh, if we do less, maybe we will uh, provide uh, a better uh, result and a better treatment for our patients uh, from uh, time to time. It's best to listen, uh, to think thoroughly and then act, not act and then uh, uh, start having questions uh, on how to fix a problem that was uh, not there before. Just 
the patient can come with a lot of problems, so you just have to pick up the puzzle the pieces and place them all together. Thank you much, uh, so much everybody for contributing to uh, uh, this uh, two days with uh, your uh, valuable presentations and hope to be in touch uh, with uh, our future events. Thank you so much. Thank you so much everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, dear friends and colleagues, Thanks to all the attendees of the first edition of the International Virtual Conference on Innovative Biological Dentistry in Obiodent 2022, organized by Stomatology at Journal. Special thanks for the honor and privilege offered uh, by friend uh, Larsman Samaranayake, Professor and Dean Emeritus, uh, University of Hong uh, Editor-in-Chief International Dental Journal to contribute as a featured guest speaker. Thanks also to the President of AeroFDI, uh, Dr. Simona Dianishkova, uh, for her participation and contribution. The success of this uh, conference is due to all the speakers present during two these uh, days who warm, warm thanks. A uh, word of uh, appreciation for unavailability of the technical department, especially to engineer Laurentiu Mihai. Uh, we received a request uh, uh, from participants to review the presentation of the speaker. To honor uh, this request, please, Follow me to put uh, this presentation on the journal website. Uh, we are also responding to uh, attendees' request for certificate. Uh, in order to honor this request, please send us your exact details. We trust uh, you enjoy this first edition of the uh, in Obioden. We look forward to welcoming you to the next edition uh, together with Sam, uh, Simona, Paula, Eduardo, uh, Florin, and uh, other work uh, now speakers. We wish you all good and healthy days ahead. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. In questo